Welcome to Millington First United Methodist Church. My name is Amanda, and I have the great privilege and honor to be the pastor here at Millington FUFC. We are so grateful that each of you has joined us for worship today as we begin the Advent season together. If you're visiting with us for the first time or the first time in a while, we are so very grateful that you are here. And we would love if you would use this tear-out sheet in our bulletin to tell us that you joined us today for worship and to leave some contact information that we might be able to follow up with you later in the week to thank you for your presence here today. As we join together for worship today, as I mentioned already, we are beginning the Advent season together. And in today's Hanging of the Greens worship service, we will uh, remember the religious significance behind the symbols that make this sanctuary such a beautiful place in this particular season. I pray that you'll be blessed today as we remember uh, the many ways we are reminded of God's love and the birth of Christ through the beautiful surroundings that we'll enjoy these next few weeks together. I have a few announcements I'd like to share with you about what's happening in the life of our church in this season and as we look forward to the future. Today, our children's church moment returns during worship. Following the children's moment, uh, children are invited to go back to the nursery if that's their age or to join Miss Debbie for Children's Church, where they will study a lesson that was uh, planned just specifically for them to help them understand, learn, and experience the Christmas story this year. We're excited that Children's Church is coming back into swing as we uh, join together and enjoy these combined hours of worship during the Advent season. Also, our college group will meet tonight. We're looking forward uh, to coming back together after Thanksgiving and beginning a Christmas study with that group. Our college-age small group meets at 6 15, and I hope you'll share that with the young people in your household or in your circle of influence. Our administrative council will meet this Tuesday, November 30th at 6 30 in Williams Hall. This will be our last meeting for this calendar year and we'll have the opportunity to share about the wonderful ministries that have been taking place and to make plans for next year as we look forward to the ways God will continue to work through this congregation to be grace and love in the Millington community. On Wednesday, we have an opportunity for families in all shapes, sizes, and ages at our Advent Family Fun Night in the Flame Center. At 5 o'clock, you and your family are invited to join us for some Christmas crafts and refreshments as we begin this season together. And our children during Children's Moment will find out about a special gift that will be there just for them and their families this Wednesday after our evening. You'll see other announcements printed in our bulletin, and I ask that you take time to look at those. You'll also notice that we have a flyer that you can take home, and you also would have been mailed one this past week of different events happening this Advent season. Uh, we pray that you'll be able to join us for the many opportunities we have uh, to grow together in faith as we celebrate the love of Christ born at Christmas. And since you might have a couple extra copies of this after worship, you're invited to share these with your neighbors and friends as a way of inviting them to join us in this special season. With all of those announcements shared, let us turn our hearts and minds to God's presence among us as we worship together.
join in our call to worship. Friends, how shall we prepare this house for the coming of the King? With branches of cedar, the tree of royalty. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of the eternal Christ? With gardens of pine and fir, whose leaves are ever living, ever green. How shall we prepare our hearts for the coming of the Son of God? By hearing again the words of the prophets and poets who foretold the saving word of God. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Glory to God in the highest. As you remain standing, will you turn to number 203 in our hymnal? Or I think the words are also on the screen. We'll sing all four verses of Hail to the Lord's Anointed. <laughs>
good morning, friends. It is so good to see all of you here today. There's a spot for every one of you. Good morning. I got to hang out with some of you already, and some of you are new friends, and we are so glad that you are here today. I wonder if you have noticed anything different about our sanctuary today from the last time you might have been here. There's more kids. I know. Isn't that a great joy to share? It's good. It is good that there are more kids here. The Christmas tree is up and has special ornaments to tell us about the story of faith and salvation. What else is different? There's wreaths. Very good. Candles. Anything else you notice? I don't think there are just more kids here, Spencer. I think there are more people here, too. It is a combined service. We get to be together to see one another as we celebrate Advent and the coming of Jesus at Christmas. And that is something that I want you not to only celebrate here when you're at church on Sundays, but also when you're at home. You know, we grow in our faith not only when we come to church, but each and every day as we read the Bible, as we pray to Jesus, as we talk with our family and our friends about where we see God in the world and how we are changing and learning and growing, those are all ways that we engage our faith. And so this Wednesday, there is a very special night. Yes, ma'am. You are growing. That's exactly right. And this Wednesday, there's this very special night planned just for you and your families and any other family and friends who want to join us. And on this Advent Fun Family Night, you are going to get to come and make ornaments for church and eat some yummy snacks. Anybody like cookies? <coughs> yeah, there are going to be some cookies there. You like Chick-fil-A nuggets? Yeah, Chick-fil-A nuggets too. Good. Well, then you need to come on Wednesday. And besides eating some yummy food, cookies are wonderful. Besides <coughs> eating yummy food and making ornaments, you are going to get a special gift. You are going to be able to be sent home with one of these boxes for your family. And this box is all about Advent. Advent is a season of preparation for the coming <coughs> of Christ at Christmas. It's a time that we take to get our hearts ready and to get our world ready for Jesus' love. One of the ways we remember that we are getting ready is we decorate. We decorate our sanctuary. Some of you may have decorated your homes or are in the process of doing so. Wonderful. You have a Christmas tree up at home then, don't you? Not yet, but it's coming. But as you look at those decorations in the church and at home, just as we get a space ready for a celebration, we get our hearts ready for the celebration of Jesus. And this box, y'all, it is packed with fun goodies for you to take so that you can learn how you can make your heart a special place for God. <coughs> there is supplies to make your own Advent wreath at home, just like we have this Advent wreath and we'll light the first candle next week. You get to take home candles to make your own Advent wreath at home. There's even paint for a special project to do with your family. And there are these special cards to make an... <laughs> That's okay. There are these special cards to make an advent calendar. There are 25 cards for you and your family to talk about God and Jesus' love every day. Some days you'll answer a question, like where you saw God in the world, and some days you'll go on a scavenger hunt to see where you can find signs of Christmas, and some days you'll even make a gift to share with someone who has been a symbol and reminder of God's love in your life. So this is a very special box that I hope that you'll come on Wednesday to take home with you so that you can continue to make your heart ready to receive Jesus this Christmas. So as you see all these decorations, as you see the twinkling lights out in the world this Christmas season, remember all of this, all of these decorations, all of these fun activities, all of the Christmas lights and Christmas cookies, they are reminders on the outside to us that we have to make our hearts ready on the inside to receive God's love and to share it with the world. That's what it means to celebrate Christmas. 
is to welcome Jesus into our hearts and then to shine his light in the world. And I know that each and every one of you can do that in your own very special way. So, before you head back to your seat in the sanctuary or to Children's Church or the nursery, will you pray with me by repeating after me? Dear God, all the decorations we see today are so very pretty. And they help us get excited for the coming of Christmas. We pray today that you would help us remember that just as we are excited for cookies and presents, we are also excited to celebrate love. The love of Jesus. God, you told us that Jesus loves us. And it is our job to share that love with others. Help us do that this Christmas season. Because we love you so very much. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, friends. I'll see you Wednesday. <coughs> Head off to your fun places. Methodist hymnal will be reading from Psalms verses 1 through 4 and 19 through 37. And you'll note at the end of each of the responsive verses, uh, whether it's capital R in red, we'll be going back and singing verse 1 at the top of the page. <coughs> I will sing with your steadfast love, O Lord, forever with my mouth. I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. Your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is firm as the heavens. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. vision of your faithful one and said, I have set the crown upon one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him. So that my hand shall ever abide with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and my steadfast love shall be with him and in my home shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. Cry to me, you are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him the firstborn, the 
the highest of the kings of the earth. My steadfast love, I will keep him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever, and his throne as the days of the heavens. In his children, for, if his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my ordinance, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgressions with the rod and their iniquity with scourges. But I will not remove from them my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. <laughs> I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips. Once for all, I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, his throne as long as the sun before him. Like the moon, it shall be established forever. It shall stand firm while the sky is endure. of God that indeed endures forever. We uh, join together now in sharing our joys and concerns, except that I just took <coughs> over you, Rob. I'm sorry. There's more to share as, the, uh, as we hang the wreaths. I had to mess up once in my first time with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> <Sure. laughs> that, that was me. Okay, hanging on the wreaths. Because the needles of pine and fir trees appear not to die each season, the egg saw them as signs of things that last forever. The psalmist reminds us that God's covenant promise began, begun in David and fulfilled through the Messiah will never end. Therefore, we hang these wreaths of evergreen shaped in a circle which itself has no end to signify the enduring love of God who we know through Jesus the Christ. It was very important that we heard the meaning of those streets, for indeed they do remind us of the never-ending faithfulness of God, which is what we celebrate as we pray together. As we lift our joys and concerns, we know that God is good and faithful to hear the cares of our hearts, the worries on our mind, and celebrates with us in the places we have experienced joy and peace and hope. So today, friends, as we are surrounded by symbols of God's faithful love, what joys or concerns would you lift up today in worship? Yes, Tina. We give thanks for that celebration and joy. Yes, Missy. I have two. Um, my sister-in-law had y'all prayed for last week for test. She um, does have breast cancer. So um, she's 46 years old, and she's going to have to do surgery and radiation at least, and we don't know what else. So Kim Young, and then also um, Daniel, my son, plays drums with a gentleman. He's in his early 30s, I think. Um, he plays guitar, but his name's Travis. He and his wife, their three-year-old, has been really sick, and they, she was just diagnosed with leukemia, mm -hmm. and she's at St. Jude. We join you in your prayers for <coughs> him and for Travis and his family. Okay. Yes. Thanks for Linda Bacon and the Millet family uh, for the loss of uh, Louise. So, uh, Linda Bacon's mom. Yes, Linda Bacon's mother passed away on Friday. I believe, and uh, her service will be here at church on Saturday. So if you all will be in prayer for uh, her family and for Louise's soul to find peace. Yes. I have, I have a joy. I have a chance to say it. I just wanted to express appreciation for our wonderful piano and trumpet duo and their beautiful uh, prelude and for our choir. 
<laughs> it is our joy too uh, as we begin Advent, a season where music is always important to worship, but it's something we especially feel our hearts drawn to uh, in this season as we prepare for Christmas. And we're grateful for all of our musicians who have led us and will continue to lead us in worship today and in the coming weeks. And to piggyback off of that, Robbie sends his love. He really tried to make it today, but. Um, Hopefully we'll be back next week, and he loves everyone. And we're glad to have Linda back. Yes, absolutely. Miss Manda. Yes, sir. I have two families. A uh, family of John Keal, they call him Pineapple. I work for the phone company. He passed away last week, and the family of Terrell Finner up in T County, another very young man. We will be praying for those families in their season of grief. So I'll hand out there. Yes. Our prayers for Tommy Hurdle. He's in the hospital and not doing well. Oh, I hadn't heard that Mr. Tommy was back in the hospital. Uh, yeah. We will hold him in our prayers. Him last night, and he's um, it's it's not good. <laughs> he's having a real tough time. His kidneys are starting to shut down. <laughs> Thank you for letting us know. We'll continue to pray for Tommy and for Jackie as she cares for him. Yes, Jan. It was a big blessing to have so many people show up Monday morning to help get all the decorations up. So it was a true blessing. Absolutely. Many hands went into preparing the sanctuary for this beautiful season, and we are enjoying uh, the work and their labor today. Friends, with those concerns shared and those that are still on our hearts, let us go to God in prayer together. Lord, your steadfast love endures forever, for you are a good and generous God. You treat us with your tender love, and Lord, you show us what it means to share concern and love within the community of faith. Through the ways that Jesus cared for those he walked this journey with, his disciples and friends, those he met on the highways and byways of life as he went to spread your good news throughout the land. God, we see an example of care and concern that you ask us to embody here together as we join in worship of you. And so, Lord, we take time today as we enjoy the beautiful moments of this season <coughs> of music that stirs our hearts comforting symbols of wreaths and trees and candles. We take time in the midst of this beautiful worship to pray for our friends, for our family, for our community, for our world. Lord, we pray for those who need your love and your presence in this season now more than ever. We pray that you would pour out your healing on all of those who find themselves in times of sickness or disease. God, be generous with your transforming love in our life today and in the lives of our community. We pray that in this season we would see your hope, your peace, your joy, and your love come to life among us that we would see what it looks like when the world lives according to your ways and not to our own desires. And God, as we wait for that day, where your love will never end, where your mercy and justice will triumph, where hope and peace will reign eternal, as we wait for that day, we pray. We lift the names that we have spoken out loud here to you. We lift up the cares and concerns that we have kept in the quiet places of our hearts and minds, knowing that you hear each prayer, both those spoken, those thought, and those that we feel that are hard to put words to. God, you hear every prayer of our heart, and you are quick to bring your light and love into the world. So open our eyes that we would see your light in our lives. Open our hearts that we would see your light in our neighborhood and families. 
open our spirits that we would experience and share your light in the places where we work, where we spend time with others. Anywhere we walk this week, may it be lighter for the love we share, God. May your light shine in the world today. For we come to worship seeking your light, your grace, and your love. And we know that you meet us in this moment as we still our hearts and quiet our minds. You meet us to offer us your peace and your strength as we seek to live as faithful disciples in the world. After the example of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to read to you from the Old Testament today. It's uh, from Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people who walk in, dark, in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness wonder uh, for a child has been born for us a son given to us the authority rests upon his shoulder and he, he is named wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace as authorities shall uh, shall shall grow constantly and there shall be uh, endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and upon it will justice and with righteousness for this time onward and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And I wish you, uh, you would follow along with me on uh, the, if you will follow in the uh, uh, dark print, I will uh, read the light print. Then the blessings of the Advent wreath. Christ came to bring us salvation and has promised to come again. Let us pray that we may always be ready to welcome him. Amen, Lord Jesus. That the keeping of the Advent may open our hearts to God's love. Amen, Lord Jesus. That the light of Christ may penetrate the darkness of sin. Amen, Lord Jesus. That this wreath may constantly remind us to prepare for the coming of Christ. Come, Lord Jesus. That the Christ season may fill us with peace and joy as we strive to follow the example of Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Will you, uh, let us all pray together. <coughs> Love God, your people, joyful away to come in Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of the street. May their life reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is one of our favorites, A Little Town of Bethlehem. 
found on page 130 in our hymnal. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human descent or decision, or a husband's will but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father <coughs> full of grace and truth. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, the light of the world, we light the Christmas tree. During this Advent season, wherever you see a lighted Christmas tree, let it call to mind the one who brings light to our darkness, healing to our brokenness, and peace to all who will receive him. Thank you. That's him. I know you would like to stand up. I can just see <coughs> your faces. So will you stand as we sing number 206, verses 1 and 3. <laughs> Thank you. 
that prepare us for the coming of Christ as we've heard scriptures foretelling the love and joy of our Savior, as we've seen the symbols added to our sanctuary that remind us of God's faithful love that we experience through the Christ child, we hardly need a sermon today. We've heard of God's love, God's peace, God's hope, and God's joy. <clears throat> through the words of song and scripture, and through the sights of symbol. But it wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't let you leave here with a little sermon. So, two verses from scripture. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 2. An introduction to our Advent worship series, Angels Among Us. Hear now the word of God. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? Will you pray with me and will you pray for me? God of love, we pray that in this season, Jesus indeed would be the star of our hearts, the light of our life. And that through our words and actions, his light would shine into the world through us. That more would come to know your loving and saving grace through Jesus. God, it's by that same grace now that I ask that you would draw me beneath the shadow of the cross. That so what is heard today are not my words, but yours. And what is felt in all of our hearts are not our own desires, but your will, O oh Lord, for you and you alone are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I think I met an angel once. His name was Arnold, and he was sitting in a booth at McDonald's on Poplar Avenue in Memphis, Tennessee, one night at 10 p.m., you see, in 2014, when I met Arnold, that was the summer right after I had graduated seminary, and Adam and I had moved back home to Memphis unexpectedly. We thought we would have spent at least another year in Nashville after I graduated from Vanderbilt, but life had different plans for us. On the Monday after I graduated, Adam went to work and was told that his position at the nonprofit where he worked was being downsized. And he was sent home that day. Soon after, the plans for my internship at the church where I worked as a student to turn into a part-time position for the next few years, those plans and finances fell free. And then a few weeks later, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. And so suddenly, life looked incredibly different than we had imagined. And Adam and I picked up our white flags, waved them, packed up our bags, headed home, and moved into my childhood bedroom in my 960-square-foot house with my mom and my brother so that we could help care for her as she went through her cancer journey and recovery, and so we could begin to look for work. The summer of 2014 was incredibly difficult for us. We often questioned if we had made the right choices, we worried about money and my mom's health. We wondered if life would ever feel like it was getting back on track for us. And we'd only been married for a year. And so to distract ourselves and frankly, to just get some time out of my small <coughs> childhood house, Adam and I would go to the McDonald's near that home with its 24-hour lobby, free Wi-Fi, and unlimited refills of $1 Diet Cokes, it was, if not a perfect, at least an affordable oasis for us to sit for a while, to work on our resumes, to search for and apply for jobs online, and to blow off a little steam. Enter Arnold. After a few nights, Adam and I noticed that the same young man tended to show up at McDonald's just about the time we got there. And one evening, Adam noticed that this guy had brought his own portable Nintendo game system to keep him busy as he sat in his booth. And so Adam, ever the social butterfly, which you know is true if you've met him, and diehard gamer at heart, he walked over and he asked him what his name was and what he was playing. 
And with that simple question, Arnold became our friend. We started sitting together at the same booth. We learned more about Arnold's life. He was the child of immigrant parents who had had trouble finding work, and so they moved around a lot. And Arnold didn't have many friends. Arnold himself could usually only find part-time positions for work, and so money in his household was often tight. And though we didn't have much in the way of money as we were unemployed at the time, Adam always offered to buy Arnold a drink and a hamburger as they would sit together, chat, job search, and play video games. At the exact time when we needed a friend, Arnold showed up. Weeks passed and finally Adam got what we had been desperately praying for. He was hired by youth villages and started his social work career again, working with youth and families. Just a few days after Adam started his new job, I interviewed for an opening as the youth minister at Oliver FUMC. And it was on my drive home from my interview with the staff parish relations committee that they called to offer me the position. And the week after my mom finished her cancer radiation treatments, I began worshiping and working and serving with Bolivar. As Adam and I transitioned into this next chapter of our lives, our late night visits to McDonald's became less frequent. Every now and then, we would catch Arnold in the grocery store where he worked, or Adam would text him to see how things were going in his life. But then one day, Arnold was gone. We didn't see him for weeks. His cell phone number was either changed or disconnected, we can't remember. But as suddenly as he had appeared in our lives, Arnold disappeared. A few months after we hadn't seen Arnold, Adam picked up the game that we had spent hours playing with him at McDonald's during that difficult season, and he remarked to me how he missed getting to see and hang out with Arnold. I remember turning to Adam and asking, do you think Arnold was an angel in disguise? Think about it. He showed up right when we needed him. When we were worried and stressed, when you needed someone to geek out with over video games for a small escape, when you needed a friend, Arnold was there. Now, I don't know if Arnold was really an angel. Maybe there is some perfectly plausible explanation for his sudden appearance and just as sudden disappearance in our lives. Like Arnold moved to another city with his family for a job, or he lost his cell phone and got a new number, but he didn't have Adam's contact anymore. I don't know if Arnold was really an angel, but what I do know is this. When we needed it most, a stranger named Arnold showed up in a McDonald's booth, became our friend, and helped Adam and I laugh and enjoy life and escape for a little while from the pressures and the hardships we were facing. <clears throat> and our small acts of hospitality to Arnold, a hamburger here, a ride to his apartment there, they were but small tokens of the gratitude we felt for the friendship he brought to our lives during a difficult time. If Arnold wasn't an angel, he was certainly sent by one to be in our lives during that season. Entertaining angels, or excuse me, entertaining strangers who may turn out to be angels is one of the ways the writer of Hebrews <coughs> says that you and I can embody God's love in the world and in our lives. The writer shares this bit of wisdom that he gleaned from an ancient story in the Hebrew scriptures. You see, in Genesis chapter 18, three strangers show up at a tent in front of Abraham out of nowhere. Abraham is standing on a hot and humid day, looking out into the distance, and suddenly he sees these three people standing there in the heat of the sun, <coughs> and Abraham offers them the hospitality of cool water, shade, rest, and a good meal. During their visit, these strangers share a special message from God with Abraham and Sarah. They share the message that 
God has promised that the desire of their heart to have a child, this desire will finally be fulfilled. Throughout the centuries of our religious tradition, these visitors to Abraham have been identified as angels. And while we often imagine angels as supernatural beings with long flowing robes and grand majestic wings, the biblical definition of an angel is much simpler. An angel is a messenger, a messenger from God. Angels are all over the place in the Christmas story that we read in the Gospels, and it seems that at each and every turn of God's love being born into the world, there is an angel there to announce to the humans involved that what is happening in their lives is part of God's plan for redemption. This Advent season, as we prepare for our hearts, to celebrate the miracle of Christmas and to receive the gift of God's love born to us in Christ. In worship, we are going to visit with these angel messengers of the gospel story. For the next few Sundays, we'll consider how the angels brought messages of hope, peace, joy, and love to people like Mary and Joseph, to people like Zachariah and the shepherds, and then we'll ask ourselves, where have we encountered <coughs> angels like these in our lives? Because friends, there are angels among us in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, maybe even in McDonald's. All around us, there are people whose words, whose actions, whose lives share the message of God's hope, peace, joy, and love. So as we discover the beauty and mystery of Christmas and the angels' stories, as we acknowledge and give thanks for the angels in our lives, may we be challenged together to become those who continue to carry God's message of hope, peace, joy, and love to the world. So in this Advent season, as we wait for love to be born at Christmas once more, keep your eyes open. Because you never know, you might just meet an angel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 204, and we'll sing it through twice. <coughs> Emmanuel, will you stand as we sing and remain standing for the benediction? <laughs>
We go to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.